will say that the Catholic Church moved the Sabbath. That's not true. That's actually a misunderstanding of what actually happened. Catholics, the church did not move the Sabbath from Saturday to Sunday. In fact, the Sabbath is not something that is celebrated liturgically by Catholics. It has been replaced by the Lord's Day of Sunday in the New Covenant. And isn't it interesting that replaced by his resurrection? Saturday yeah. is a day of rest. Right. If we follow strictly, and this is what Seventh Day Adventists, there, the, yeah, this is what they they focus on, and and they they recognize the Sabbath. However, when we think about it, what happened? Jesus died on what day? Friday. Friday. Good. Right. Good Friday. And then they had to take him down from the cross and do all of that work. Why? Because the Sabbath, like they couldn't work. They couldn't do that type of a thing. So they had to rest on the Sabbath. But we know that Jesus didn't rise on the Sabbath. He rose on the third day. Yeah. So what would that third day have been? You could still observe the Sabbath, but Catholics are not commanded to worship on the Sabbath. Yeah. If you want to observe the Sabbath with rest, that's okay. And hey, I think Pope that's Benedict's, important to the spiritual life. Yeah, and Pope Benedict said, look, observing that rest on the Sabbath is a good thing. Mm -hmm. But Catholics aren't commanded to that. They are commanded to worship on the Lord's Day. And what I love about this, to worship on the Lord's Day, we call it liturgy, which means work. So it's distinctly different that's than right. Sabbath. That's a great yeah. point. Good. And wow. when you think of the third day... Right, Jesus rises. Our work is beginning, mm -hmm. and the work is materializing effectively. And the work is salvific in nature, sanctifying us, sanctifying our will, so that we may enter into greater intimacy and union with the Father and with our neighbor to exercise that greater harmony as a foretaste of the kingdom of heaven, which is at our fingertips. It's right here among us. The kingdom is among us. How? It's because Jesus is among us and Jesus is within us and with us. So realizing these mysteries and how important it is to live these mysteries in the practice of our Catholic faith, our worship must be oriented on a day of work. And that is the third day, which also can be referred to as the eighth day. Yeah, the eighth day. And that's what the early church would call it as the eighth day, the new creation, the new covenant. And you'll see this in scripture. So people who say, you know, who are, who will say, well, the church moved the Sabbath or whatever, we should be working on Saturday. The early church was very clear that they had abrogated the Sabbath requirements and had now shifted their worship and their liturgy, their work to the new day. So you see it in 1 Corinthians 16, on the first day of each week, you should set aside and save whatever one can afford so that the collections will not be going on when I come. Uh, that's St. That's Paul. You can see in uh, Acts 20, on the first day of the week, when we gathered to break bread, Paul spoke, blah, 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 on and on. So this is, uh, this is presented here before you. And again, we'll recover these scriptures and we'll share them very clearly so that you can have in your Bible marked. If you open up 1 Corinthians chapter 16, it's evident, verse 2, on the first day of the week, right? So we're talking about Sunday. Acts of the Apostles. This is important. In the eighth verse of chapter 20, of chapter 20 we hear... In the seventh verse, excuse me, on the first day of the week, once again, brothers and sisters, they're gathering to break the bread. This is Eucharist at its core. This is St. Paul. This is scripture. So anybody who's challenging what you do as mm -hmm. a Catholic, what you do as a faithful follower of Christ, it's right here in the scriptures. And I'm not one to go out and apologetically go out and try to evangelize and proselytize and say, hey, you're getting the scriptures wrong and I'm going to I'm going to prove you wrong. But we are we are living the faith in a scriptural and an apostolic way. Right. We're doing the same exact thing that was done by the ones whom Jesus instituted these very mysteries and set them into motion through. I wonder why. <laughs> <laughs> you know, an another thing I think that's important to talking about why Sunday, this was an interesting thing that I, I read about, is that a lot of people say, well, the church didn't even move worship to Sunday. This was a command of Constantine. They always blame Constantine for literally everything. Anyone who's a critic of the church, who's a fundamentalist, basically says Constantine is the founder of the Catholic papish religion, right? What? 
But and they'll go back to this eating. You haven't heard that, Ryan? <laughs> no. What kind of people are you talking about? I guess, I, about? I, I, guess I gotta take a look at my friends. <laughs> <laughs> Not that you gotta look at your enemies. <laughs> I, you deserve a better class of enemy. Yeah, well, thank you. But um, they'll say that, you know. <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> um, that Constantine did make an edict in 321. It was the edict, edict of Milan. Yeah. No, the edict of Laodicea, <laughs> oh, okay. which says that. It mandate that people were not to work and do stuff on Sunday. So they oh, cool. they look at that like, oh, that was him saying that now it's Sunday and I'm moving the Sabbath and I'm breaking God's law. No. It was basically like a federal holiday. He right. was in the Roman Empire saying, we are now making every Sunday a holiday. It is a federal holiday. So there's a distinction there because, I mean, we have federal holidays in America for all kinds of things. You know, it's the freaking weekend, guys. Yeah, like, President's Day and Martin Luther Chill King's out. Day. You got and, the Lord's Day. Yeah. Just take it easy. But, you know, <laughs> that whole idea of not working and businesses being closed on a Sunday mm -hmm. goes all the way back to that edict of Laodicea where mm -hmm. it was mandated yeah. that businesses had to be closed on Sunday. And, I mean, we see that in our modern world. It used to be that, you know, you had your blue laws. Everything was closed on Sunday. You can't buy alcohol. Dude, look at uh, freaking Chick-fil-A, bro. Like, they're, they're killing well, I mean, it. They are killing it. Killing it. And and they're closed on Sunday. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How could we do that? We're losing one-seventh yeah. of our income. Oh, no, we yeah. can never keep up pursuit with of Wendy's. That, right. The, <laughs> the pursuit of things that are temporal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh. mm -hmm. So, but, you know, having those businesses closed on Sunday is a good thing, too, and not... Look, if you have a business and you don't have to be open on Sunday, try not to be. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, it's good. I know a lot of business owners that took a step in that direction. And what's amazing, and I'm not, I'm not a gospel of prosperity person. Obviously, it's a heresy. But they certainly experienced gains, whether that was spiritual, whether that was economical or whatever happened. They absolutely, their life improved drastically every time somebody has taken that step. Mm -hmm. I know a guy, um, he was a Protestant, but like I've never seen somebody so intent on like making sure that the profits that they make as a company, that that money goes out to something that's a charity or to his church or things like that. And he's a very, very successful guy. And the more he got successful, the more he just put pushed money out. And I was like, this is a beautiful mm -hmm. testimony to... The offering that God is doing this. Yes. He's mm -hmm. given me these gifts and talents. He's given me the opportunities. And and as he would, you know, continually give, you know, God, I think God just blessed him, you mm -hmm. know, more and more.